Okay, this will be a short lecture on valence bond theory. If you remember from uh, chapter 10, 1170, we try to find the hybrid orbitals for, a, um, for the central atom of different molecules. So we had sp, sp2, sp3, sp3d, sp3d2. For valence, uh, for the, the hybrid orbitals for uh, metals that are part of a complex ion, it's a little trickier. Same basic idea, though. So we have chromium here. They want to know the hybrid orbital for chromium in, in here, so uh, in this complex. So we need to know the charge on the, the chromium. It's plus three. We can see that. Here's chromium, but chromium plus three, we're going to get rid of this. And remember, this is that exception, so we, that's why we don't have two electrons here. So we get rid of one, two, three. So just to make sure that it got rid of them. Now, we need six... Um, empty orbitals, because each water molecule is going to come in with a lone pair, each ligand will. So the ligand comes in with the two electrons, so what the central atom has to have is an, an empty orbital. So we need six empty orbitals. Now these ones I've scratched out, those are empty, so we just uh, we can't touch these, even though they're half-filled, and that's what we were looking for back in chapter 10. Now we need completely empty orbitals to allow the two electrons from the ligand to uh, attach. So we start here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this would be D2, S, P3, because we're going order. There's two Ds, one S, three Ps. Let me rewrite that. So D2, S, P3. Those are the hybrid orbitals. Now, when they hybridize, they turn into six that are exactly the same kind of shape, though they go off in six different directions, and this is the hybrid. Uh, or the hybridization is D2SP3. So what you do is you find the uh, central atom, you write out the, elect the orbital diagram, and you can use the noble gas uh, abbreviation. You uh, um, write it out with the full electrons, then you take away the electrons. The S electrons go first. That's always the case. We learned that back in chapter... Uh, Chapter 9, actually, uh, the, the, for the transition metals, we remove the 4s electrons first. And so let's do it again down here. We have iron. It's in, now we, the cyanide has a minus 1. There's six of them, so minus 6, so this must be plus 3 again. Here's the orbital diagram for iron. So since we got to get rid of three of electrons, we get rid of these three, uh, these two. And sorry, I can't erase them, but just know that that's now empty. And then we got to get rid of a third, and we get rid of the one that's paired up. So now we can't touch any of these. Uh, so we get we have to use this one, these next three, and then we go into the four Ds. So that's why I didn't draw the four Ds up here because I didn't need to. We we had six, but here we needed them. So now this is sp three d two. That should be very familiar. And we know that sp three d two is like for sf six a molecule that we'd see back in chapter uh, 10, uh, created an uh, octahedral structure, and that's the that's what we have here for each of these. This one just turns out doesn't have the right orbitals to do something uh, that we're familiar with, but you just fill in a... So if, if this one was missing, we would have started here. This would have been D, S, P, uh, P3, D. So they can get a little wild looking, but just follow that procedure. Write out the orbital diagram, remove the electrons starting with the 4S, the, the guys that I give you, these, uh, uh, now this is plus three, the, the metals that I give you will be from that first row. So you'll be able to use this, this uh, orbital diagram straight, straight out. Uh, you just have to put in the different number of electrons and take away the number. It doesn't have to be plus three. They just happen to be here. It could be plus two, plus one, plus four. So just make sure you, you remove the right number of electrons and then go from there.